All right, so let me start by sharing my screen. All right, and uh, let me go here and open this simple, simple workflow and uh, to, to show you uh, all these different cuts in a single live demo. So first of all, you can see here this simple workflow. We are reading some data, we are selecting some features, we are partitioning between train and test data. We're doing some missing value imputation with training a random forest, and then we are evaluating in performance with an interactive view. Now, something nice that you could do is to actually make it even easier and share within your own organization or even within the entire community. So let, let me show you live how you can do that. So I'm going to uh, select those uh, four nodes. I'm going to right click and say create component. And uh, Phil, how do we call this component? Uh, uh, cool magic stuff. All right, so cool magic stuff. I can't call it AI because we all know that's not magic. So cool magic stuff. Yep. All right. So now, now we created this component and of course we can also customize it a bit. So if I go inside and you can still find the, the same notes, we can go in view and description and we can, for example, here customize here. We can say again, magic stuff. We can color the component by selecting maybe it's a learner and we can even, for example, select here a little icon about magic stuff and so on. So we save this component and now as I go back to uh, the, the main workflow here, so let me close this, we can actually now share it with the community. So I can right click the component and go component share. Now I can select my name app and select this public space, click OK, and now the component is shared publicly. What does that mean? It means they can be found on the app and I can access the app even here from the Nime Analytics platform. So I select here the Nime app search panel and, it's, and search here for right cool magic stuff we said. So cool magic stuff and I search for it and here we have cool magic stuff, the component of our magic stuff, of course, this is now just an example, right? We want to uh, show you that it's super easy to make those components, to, to package something and, and uh, share it with anyone, with everything. But what about reliable and um, components and reusable components, the ones that Johnny showed? Uh, what Absolutely. about those? So let's find something a bit more real and let's use it in our workflow. And uh, recently we shared a new component called AutoML component. So I can select here the AutoML component and there is here this uh, image that will show me how I can drag and drop it in my Nime Analytics platform. So I go ahead and I drag and drop it, this component in my workflow. It's a, it's a big component, it takes a bit of time, but it, it, here we are. All right, so now we can, let me now uh, maximize here again, so we can see better. And, and I can now replace this component that I uh, created. And at this point, I can actually select the different settings here and I can, Mm, actually, uh, we can select, for example, delay the uh, feature they want to predict and select the models they want to train. And by clicking OK, I can then execute and we are going now to train all those models. This looks like a node, but it's not a node, it's a component. In fact, if I right click, go component and open, I can go inside and actually see uh, the, uh, all this uh, complex workflow that is being packaged in a way they can have all these dialogues here. Here you can see the configuration nodes, they open the dialogues. We can see all those other components that we call nested components. And we can have here all the complexity being hidden, but still here and and uh, with all those annotations explained. Now, um, now it, you can see that now the best model is being selected and exported here with integrated deployment. So if I go now back uh, to the, uh, the component, it's now ready, but let me open a workflow where, uh, since we are a bit out of time, where we have already done the, the work of connecting more nodes. We have our component, we, we are actually using it, and the component also offers an interactive view that you can use 
to see all the models that were trained. So in this case, we trained uh, all these different models and to predict the delays of those flights, the logistic regression was the best uh, model that was selected. Now, of course, AutoML can be computationally expensive or whatever complex component you have. So you might not always to execute this on your local machine and you might want to execute this on a server. So how would that look like? Well, you can, of course, control components, uh, workflows also for a server, and uh, even here change the settings, just that the execution doesn't happen with the computational power of your machine, but the one of a server and all the possible executors you have there, and change the settings and so on. All right, so um, at this point, let me uh, open here my workflow repository. Um, I showed you um, all those uh, uh, different uh, uh, things that you can do with this component, but this is just one of them. Johnny showed you that there are so many others. And actually, if you go on the uh, Verify component page, you will find even more. The XI view was another one that uh, um, uh, Phil showed, but there are so many categories. And what's more important, those are all publicly shared on the app, but also we have also components made by the community that we like here, because of course, we are happy when open source users provide even their components through here. So uh, let me now uh, go back a second and, and show you that maybe the output of this component, right? We, we have a component that wrote a workflow in the end. That's what it's exporting thanks to integrated deployment. You can see all these uh, model that was is being exported explained by the sequence of nodes and those brown nodes is what is being saved by integrated deployment for exporting it now this workflow can be deployed can be uh, given to a server create a rest api but we can also use it uh, from another any application so let me show you an example before you go away just one thing uh, remember I said early on that I would, I'm not a machine learning person, but I don't mind learning. This is fantastic for me because with this example, it, something has actually been created that's been done properly. I can actually go into this workflow and learn how to do it myself a little bit. So I can say, what steps do I need? What do I have to take care of? And for the, for the situation I chose, I actually can learn from the code. So not only can we reuse the code, I can actually use it to learn myself as well, which I love. So again, this is the output we, work, we wrote from an AutoML component. We wrote the output and the output is a workflow. And let's now take it and use it from the Jupyter Notebook here. So um, this is the Jupyter Notebook and this is for the code first user that we showed before, right? He really likes to never abandon, for example, if he's a Python user, the, this Jupyter Notebook and he can call the workflow here, inspect it, this is the same workflow again, and then he can, uh, for example, uh, load some data using pandas and then here using a script to execute the workflow and then you can get the predictions back out of the uh, output of the workflow. And once you have the prediction back in Jupyter, you can visualize distribution, visualize the confusion matrix, or visualize, for example, all scenario C curve. Of course, once you're, uh, you, you have what you needed from the workflow, you can just keep on coding and do whatever you want. But again, it's, it's just a use case here. So uh, if you are interested in more about this, uh, there will be a webinar next week where we are going to go through more details of this uh, use case. So uh, let's now uh, talk about another uh, workflow and that would be for example the uh, the idea of taking the component and instead of simply using a workflow or exporting whether we ask to export and read it for example on Jupyter Notebook or deploying on Nime server we want instead to package it using these interactive views to make it even more accessible so this can be is a workflow that can be used from the Nime analytics platform and you can see all those different interactive view to control how the automatic component executes using widget nodes so what I want to select here to train a model what are what is my target and so on. But what's really interesting is that the same application can be hidden from the eyes of the user that is using it via the Nine web portal. In fact, if I now move on uh, to the uh, Nime uh, web portal, here we are. Um, we have here the same exact application I just showed you with the, uh, now I put to full screen, that is accessible via Google Chrome, but it could be also any other web browser. So now I select the data that I want to use. Again, the line 2009 samples, it's just a tiny sample of data, but it could be any data. And then I put my credential, I go ahead. In this case, maybe we don't want to train deep learning cars because it's 
taking a bit of time with all those epochs, but we can uh, then select what the columns we want. We can expect the data a bit more, but let's now just click next and, and let's see this uh, workflow executing. So at this point, we're training all the models. Again, the user doesn't need to see the workflow, but if we would go back to nine, we would see the automatic component retraining all those models again and spitting out the best one. And here we have those is metadata of all the models, but the best one is the XGBoost trees, which is the one I showed you before. And you can see here that you can get information that was decided via widgets and view nodes. And for example, the download widgets node, they can be used to download, again, the best model to use it anywhere you want. 